Becky, good morning. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Listen, I love those videos that you keep posting with everybody at the gym. I love it. I don't know how you get that, that many females jumping up and down like that. I want to talk about Thinking Grow Rich. How did you start with Thinking Grow Rich? Uh, what's been your experience? And uh, tell us a couple of important things that we could take away from that. Um, I have loved reading since my daughters were old enough that I had a little bit of me time. I started really getting into reading. Um, the Secret, uh, Manifesting Change, Think and Grow Rich. Um, these were just a couple, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, when I started reading those, my whole life started to change because your mindset changes. And you can use these books in every aspect of your life. It's not just money. Uh, you can use these whether it's in your fitness, your life, your relationships. Um, it will just make you a better person all around. Becky, what were the first two things that you picked out from the book when you started reading it originally? I mean, you look like you're 22 yourself. So what, how old were you when you started reading this book? Um, this one was just a couple years ago, actually. Um, there's so many things. But when I started my own fitness studio was when I really needed to start um, applying the tips in Think and Grow Rich. When you become an entrepreneur, you need that strong mindset. And I love the chapters on persistence and power because to be successful in anything at life, you need such a huge amount of persistence. Um, the book gives you so many tips and, and advice on how to grow your persistence. I'm just going to find a piece here. Number one is you need to have an object of desire. So a goal that is so strong in your mind that you're willing to work uh, so hard towards. And I love how the book says there's no substitute for persistence. I it's, agree with that. Yeah. hundred um, percent. So what, 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 what made you open your own fitness studio? And, and I know that you, we shared this before another live and you told me how difficult was it to start initially and what helped you or what was the kicker? How did you get over that hump? Because a lot of individuals, when they rethink in Grow Rich, obviously it's not about the money. It's a personal development and growth, which would transmute into riches which you and i in our society we measure that with the amount of money we make but how did you get over that hump because i know a lot of business owners you know students a lot of different people they might be stuck a little bit of where they're at and sometimes they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel what would you say was for you how did it help you um so when we started when i started my studio it was just over five years ago the place I had been working at closed down and I was, I homeschool our daughters because of that, I can't leave them. So I had to be able to work from home. So that's why we started our own studio and it was all easy at the beginning. We had, you know, it was small. Uh, we had only eight people to join me in my little fitness studio and most days only one person would show up or two people. Uh, so it was, I think that mindset already was like, okay, well, there's only two people here today. You could cancel the class, but you don't. You give those two people the best experience that you can for that day. And it was almost a year of one or two people who would just show up to my little classes. But I loved doing it. I love fitness and I loved helping those two or three people. So we never once have canceled a class. It's been uh, over five years and we offer wow. 35 classes a week and not one of them has ever been canceled. So doesn't matter if I'm sick. Uh, one time I had been in a car accident at 3 p.m. and I was back at home by 5.30 to teach my class. Wow. 
Yeah. Talk about resilience. Talk about resilience. Uh, no, now I know. Last time we talked, I, I've seen your 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 daughters, and they're crazy daughters. They're on top of social media. They were they were they were messaging while we were talking on our lives. I love it. They're on top of it. The, yeah. the, the genes has definitely passed on with yeah. some steroids on it. They definitely were like fully engaged. I loved it. But uh, let me ask you a question. If there are female entrepreneurs right now watching our live channel, which we got about you know a couple of hundred people usually you know at one time they watch it, but throughout the day there are a lot more people that are watching it. What would your recommendation be if they're starting off? First of all, why should they read the Think and Grow Rich book? And then yeah. what is your recommendation of them becoming entrepreneur? Because a lot of them are hesitant. They're scared. We're all scared when we want to get into a new field or or get out of our comfort zone. What 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 can you tell us that will help us in that process? Yes, that's a great question. Um, I think at the beginning, so entrepreneurs, mompreneurs, women who are looking, they have a passion and they feel that they want to follow it and create a business. Number one, um, you must have a goal, so or a purpose a well-defined purpose. What are you trying to do with this business? And for me, it's to help reach as many people as possible uh, to help them uh, realize their own goals. And reading Think and Grow Rich, uh, for me, it's on, in my book, it's page 99. And it lists right. the reasons that most people fail um, in life. So let's right. say they fail at business, they fail at uh, their career, they fail at their fitness. And number two is a lack of well-defined purpose. Number three, lack of ambition to aim above mediocrity. 98 out of 100 people lack a purpose in life. That means only two people have the drive or purpose to succeed. That's crazy number. That's crazy. That's awesome. But, That's but crazy. The, there's a part I love in this book, and it says, oh, I love this. It's amazing. Let me just find it. It lists the reasons why people fail, but then it tells you what you need to do. And I'm trying to find the page, but it's about creating a mastermind. And right. I have one of the best masterminds. So it's a group of people and sometimes there's at least one person who will aid you in the development of persistence. But let me just find it here. Okay, surround yourself. Here's to my entrepreneur friends, okay? My mompreneurs, if you're out there and you're thinking of starting I think we lost it. Contained in the chapter on power. So find the chapter on power. Surround yourself. Back. Oh. Yep. Surround yourself with a mastermind group. And through the cooperative efforts of the members of this group, you can develop persistence. Willpower, desire. Um, this book is insane. Like I'm going to find this other page just to talk about. But I love that one on, on a mastermind. One second here. Take your time. Thank you. So how as long as you're not missing any classes, I'm cool. No, I'm good. <laughs> so uh, four simple steps which lead to the habit of persistence. Number one, your definite purpose, which we spoke about. Right. Number two, a definite plan. And I like to write down my plans. Like you posted this morning, um, have a plan, but then write it down. Number three, a mind closed tightly against all negative and discouraging influences. And this can come from relatives, friends, and acquaintances. I tell you what we're doing, Becky. I'm even doing it even better. Yeah. I got three coaches. I got yeah. three coaches that have helped me 
put together an affirmation sheet of paper and a goal setting sheet of paper. Perfect. We give it to our designers. They're putting it together. God willing, everything will be done by end of this week. We're going to have it. So for everybody to download it. Literally, they're just going to go on the link, click, put their email, download the file, PDF. They could print it and just literally write on it. So if you're just a brand new person, you don't know how to write it, or you're not good at creating your own version of writing, reading, and all that, all yeah. of that work is done for you. The part that you need to do is you need to put the time to go look for it, download it, print it, and literally just write down what you want. So we're making it like very easy. They will still require, you know, a, a, a little bit of a contribution from your side, and yeah. then you'll be able to do all of that. So that's coming out because I had challenge. English is my like second and third language, and I'm confused with a lot of other, you know, other languages that I try to learn everything else. So for me initially, that really helped me a lot. And I literally went and I copied and I copied somebody else's affirmation and I made it my own because I couldn't come up with my own. So I literally took that guy's. I copied it. I said, "This is what I'm gonna do. This is what I'm doing in the morning. This is what I will do in return." For the money that I'm gonna get, this is my plan. Now, over years, I've modified it and kind of cut it, could tailored it to me of what I want. But initially, for me, it was very, very difficult to come up with that. So we made that. I'm very, very proud of myself and our group putting it together. So it's gonna be there. I know you're gonna love it, and you'll be able to send it to all the mompreneurs. Everybody, all the female is free. Just pass it around. Hopefully, if they become successful, that contribution will definitely be there for our own society, and everybody's going to be there. So it will be good. But here's one thing, Becky. I got a question. Tell us one secret of how it was so hard uh, for you to get your business launching to where your success is. But tell us one secret that a lot of people don't know about you. What was it? What are some of the things that happened behind the scenes that people don't know? Oh, so many things. Um, Just okay. give me one, because nobody's watching this anyway. So you're cool. Feel free to share. Okay. Um, so some things that happened. Number one, uh, we had just built our little home, our home, and our home studio, and it was running great. And uh, we lost our entire life savings, so that was bad. My husband and I have been married almost 20 years. Uh, in August, we'll be married 20 years. We have three daughters, 15, 12, and nine. And uh, when the baby, when they were a little bit smaller, it was about seven years ago, we lost our entire life savings. And uh, that was awful. And we didn't know how we were gonna continue. Uh, my husband lost his job when I was pregnant with our second daughter. And he spent six weeks looking for another job. And we had no life savings to get us through that. So it was really challenging. Um, in that time, I even ended up collecting beer bottles and beer cans, uh, liquor bottles from the garbage just to put food on the table. Um, but we survived. And uh, we, our studio was running great. Uh, everything was going well. Um, I started to gain more clients when somebody on our street, uh, a neighbor complained about us running a studio from home and the town came and shut us down. So we either, wow. yeah, we got a notice at our door saying we had to close down our business. Um, and that was, we either closed it down or we moved. So we ended up putting our house up for sale right away. And we rebuilt the exact same home, just four minutes from our uh, current home. So we rebuilt. And in the meantime, while our house was being built, we ended up living at a hotel. We were, um, we were building a house and I was leading fitness classes from our builder's garage. Uh, so that wow. we could continue our fitness classes during that time. Um, then our house got built up. Uh, we, we moved in. We started our classes again. Everything was going great. Um, I ended up getting a couple of my videos going viral on Facebook. And my Facebook page exploded. My social media went crazy. Uh, it was insane. And then... Um, so how many years later? So it grew organically to 60,000 followers. And one year ago, 
uh, Facebook disabled my whole page. Wow. Uh, so yeah, all those things. Well, you guys had too many good looking models on it. <laughs> no, it was, it was crazy. So I lost all access to that. My personal Facebook page was disabled and I had to start that all over again. Um, just finding all those people I had connected with. But if you're a mompreneur, if you're an entrepreneur, wow, you are going to need so much willpower, so much persistence, so much determination. Um, this book is going to help with that. It lists things that you might need to work on, we might need to work on. Um, there's so many things. There was only one that we can't control. So reasons we might fail or give up. There was only one reason that we don't really have much control over and it's our hereditary background. Out of Which is the number one causes from the 30 causes of failure. That's mm -hmm. the number one that you may not be able to do it. So that hereditary. that's there, but I, yeah, but so that's, I mean, that's obviously. genetic. Exactly. So everything else we're in control. Mm -hmm. But I love it. I love it. I didn't know those stories. You didn't share all this stuff the first time. So I'm thinking if you do five, six more interviews with you, you you'll tell us the whole story, right? <laughs> you didn't share all that stuff. That's yeah. crazy. And and let me tell you something, Becky. I have had so many friends, so many acquaintances, so many entrepreneurs around me, and I'm telling you, every single one of them the main reason why they made it was because they were just tough. They were just going to, they, they were just going to work through. I mean, there were some challenges, obstacles. I mean, there were things that, 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 that went crazy. And, and I tell you one of the things I was in financial services. Uh, uh, I've been in financial services for 12 years. One of our offices, we partnered up with this guy and we brought him to our office Overnight, our office was shut down too. We literally had to go the next day to look for another location. And I remember I was sitting down in the car with one of my agents, you know, doing checking around to see where we're going to open our own office. And literally it was two and a half blocks, not even two and a half blocks, like two blocks, maybe like one minute of drive. And we found this office. We walk inside. It just happened that the landlord just reconnected with his son. The son was putting all this stuff for lease. We were the first person that approached him for the office. He wanted to get the deal done. He did it with no deposit. He did not check our credit. He didn't do any of that stuff. Literally handed us the key and said, you guys can move in. I'll give you a month and a half for free. Start paying rent and you're totally fine. And I'm actually in that building for the past seven years. And I just literally, I was like, wow, like no credit check. Like, I mean, obviously we all got good credit, but he didn't check in anything. Literally handed us the check, the, the, the key to the door and we walked in. So um, you just got to tough it out sometimes. So that's what that is. So I'm very, I'm very excited to do more of these lives. Becky, I really, really appreciate you putting this time. I know you're very busy doing all this stuff, but you and I are going to be uh, in communication. I love your page. I love the stories that you put. It's Thank so you. fun watching your stories. Okay. <laughs> it's just all over the place. I love it. And then you put the dance studios. I can, that wants me to get on the studio. It wants me to start going to gym more often. So yeah. definitely you're contributing a lot to a lot of people's lives. Oh,